trains were involved in the appalling railway disaster at Harrow and Wheelstone. Each was full of people and the station was also crowded with the result that British railways have suffered their worst accident. Robin Riddles, chief mechanical and electrical engineer of the British Railways Executive, told us this in 1981. Whilst there was no immediate need to build express passenger locomotives, the tragic accident at Harrow Wheelstone gave me an opportunity to replace the locomotive damage beyond repair with a prototype for the future, an engine for mainline express passenger service fitted with Caprotti valve gear. What he designed was the ultimate British express passenger locomotive that was destined to remain unique because the decision to dieselise the railways was taken before 71,000 was completed. Riddle's designed Duke of Gloucester to have the most advanced Caprotti valve gear, not so much to improve the poor thermal efficiency of a reciprocating steam engine, but to improve reliability. Unfortunately, two things counted against the experiment in service. Firstly, corners had been cut in the loco's construction after the diesel decision had been made, and these were to haunt the performance until discoveries were made during restoration. Secondly, because the Duke was different, most crews despised it and spent no time learning how to achieve the best performance with it. So what you see in all these short films is a rather run-down, neglected locomotive. Shedded at Crew North all its life, crews phoning in from London or Glasgow directions for a replacement for a failing loco miraculously overcame their difficulties when approaching crew and seeing that the Shedmaster had put 71,000 out on the reserve road. Despite Riddle's not expecting improved efficiency, testing at Swindon showed that 71,000 produced a higher cylinder efficiency than any other simple expansion engine ever recorded, 86% of what was theoretically possible. Sam L, chief test engineer at Swindon, observed that the locomotive worked happily at 3% cut-off and he described it as the ultimate stage of development of the steam locomotive in this country. Coal consumption was, however, very high, and subsequent studies have shown that the drafting was utterly compromised by the substitution of British Caprotti's Kyle Chap exhaust design with a double Dean Goods. That's a double chimney with blast pipes and petticoats of identical proportions to a Great Western 060 goods engine of 1883. So much for saving money on construction, it must have cost the savings thousands of times over in coal. After only eight years' service, the locomotive sat in Crew North Shed Yard, awaiting its fate. Initial thoughts of preservation were cast aside in 1967 due to lack of space at the then museum at Clapham. The right-hand cylinder was removed and test sectioned in order to provide the best view of the internals, and once these were found, the left-hand cylinder was removed, sectioned and put on display at the Science Museum in South Kensington. By 1967, all motion and non-ferrous items had been removed, and the hulk sat at the shed awaiting its fate which turned out to be a journey ultimately to the Barry scrapyard of Dye Woodham, where even more parts were liberated by souvenir hunters. In 1973, a group of six enthusiasts led by Colin Rhodes got together in an attempt to purchase the loco from Dye Woodham, and on 24th of April 1974, the Duke left Barry for the metals of the Great Central Railway at Loughborough. The story of the groundbreaking restoration of 71,000 at Loughborough has been told many times in the press and in books. 17 years of superb engineering encompassing all the skills that were used in the loco's original build 
but this time almost exclusively by a dedicated band of volunteers. It became known as the Impossible Dream. Many engineering companies were so impressed by our achievements that they provided their work services at cost. British Steel, Hawker Sidley, Rolls-Royce, Brush Traction, Heenan and Froude and many others all played a big part in the construction of missing cylinders, valve gear, motion, rods and all the paraphernalia of a locomotive. Lack of finance nearly brought things to a halt several times, to be restarted when another enthusiast for the cause decided to make a donation or purchase some shares. Only two grants were received during the restoration and they total less than £10,000. During the restoration we had great help from Tom Daniels, by then retired from British Caprotti, who helped us correct many of the original build faults, including the design of a Kyle Chap exhaust and improvements to the drafting of the grate. In later years we have made improved exhaust cams to further improve coal consumption, based on work by Tom in correspondence with the famous French engineer André Chapelon, just before he died in 1978. Effective though these modifications have proved thus far, we feel that there is more to be had in the way of increased efficiency and research will be carried out during the overhaul to see if further small changes should be made. Our patron, His Royal Highness Prince Richard, Duke of Gloucester, has been very supportive throughout and has visited us on a number of occasions. In 1986 he carried out a renaming ceremony and drove the locomotive on the Great Central Railway and, once we had achieved mainline status, he drove us from Upper Hayford to Digcot, thundering through the middle road of Oxford Station at 70 miles an hour. Our founder, the late Colin Rhodes sums up the determination to succeed generated by a meeting with the Association of Railway Preservation Societies. In 1973 we attended the ARPS meeting of Peterborough, very green and not really knowing what to do. Myself and the then secretary went to the ARPS for help and guidance and we were shouted down and laughed at. And we walked out of that meeting so determined to prove them wrong that we should really say thank you because if they'd have possibly been a little bit more helpful the project would never have got on because we wouldn't have had the determination as they generated in us that day.
Operating on today's railway is far more regulated than it was on our returns in 1990 and 2004. Each time 71,000 returns from an overhaul, there is yet more safety equipment, black boxes, telemetry, etc. Ever ahead of the game, we were amongst the first to fit all of these, including air brakes to the locomotives so that we could haul modern air brake coaches. Talking of overhauls, after the restoration, our ticket lasted for seven years, and we missed a rule change by days which would have allowed a boiler retube for a further three years. What followed was our first heavy general overhaul in preservation, where the loco was literally taken to pieces and refurbished. To help with this, we achieved a £283,000 Heritage Lottery Fund grant, which was later topped up with another £83,000 to see the job finished. We contributed roughly double our balancing commitment in volunteer hours and donations. The loco then operated for another eight years, with an interim boiler retube after five years, before failing in 2012 with a cam box problem, after which it was decided to commence the next heavy general overhaul at Tysley Locomotive Works. Having been advised by Heritage Lottery Fund that there would not be an opportunity to receive another grant, we needed to raise up to £650,000 to cover work to the locomotive and its support coach that travels everywhere with the volunteer support crew on board. The decision to place a contract with the commercial works was taken in the light of ever more stringent safety requirements by the Office of the Rail Regulator, whereby volunteers could only contribute support, leaving the major work covered by a contractor's accreditation. In October 2013, we formed a new CIO Foundation charity, BR Class 8 Steam Locomotive Trust, which has transformed finances, with currently over 260 members contributing an average of over £180 each per annum with gift aid. The Trust's objectives are to provide education and training for young people through practical engineering apprenticeships in order to provide the skills necessary to maintain the locomotive and coach for the foreseeable future. A truly unique locomotive has unique support requirements and we are in the process of creating an apprentice scheme called the Duke Training Engineers in conjunction with our friends at Tysley Locomotive Works. They will learn the intricacies and foibles of the loco. They will be funded by the trust and supported through college to achieve their level two MVQ or diploma and advanced apprenticeship in engineering level three. Our apprentices will experience the full gamut of engineering from light to relatively heavy and including a fair dose of electrical and electronics. Should they wish to gain experience elsewhere later in their career, they will find that industry is crying out for practical, knowledgeable engineers. <laughs> 